So there's a lot of information online about heat treatment. A lot of it is right, a lot of it sucks. Uh, so I've gone through a lot of trial and error to figure out the proper heat treating method of 1095. Each steel is different in their heat treatment and the way you temper it, the way you quench it. So this process is very, very suited for 1095. There are other processes that are better this process works for me. If you follow the steps correct, you'll get 59 on the Rockwell, which is perfect for 1095 for a general use knife, unless you're trying to do a, a chopping knife. So to increase your chances of a successful quench it comes down to your preparation. I like to polish my knife up a little bit to make it a little bit easier after the heat treatment. You'll want to clean your edges up so this is smooth and you'll want to chamfer your holes so you don't have any 90 degree sharp corners. Uh, when you have a 90 degree corner, it's a lot more prone to breaking uh, during the heat treatment because everything is just tensing up and there's a lot of stress underneath the steel and 90 degree corners are more prone to breaking. So this is my quench tank inside of an old ammo can. The oil that I'm using is canola oil. A lot of people have trouble with it because they don't know exactly how to quench proper in it. So what you need to do is heat it up to about 135 degrees. Uh, the more precision you have, the better. So I use a hot plate to heat the oil. What that'll do is create a convection in the oil and it'll evenly distribute the heat. What I used to do is just plunge a hot piece of steel in it and what'll happen is it'll create a hot layer on top and then down below, since the colder oil will fall to the bottom, uh, when you plunge your knife in to quench, it creates these different uh, quenching speeds in the oil. To measure the temperature of the oil, I have this K-type uh, thermometer with a probe. Uh, this is a really accurate thermometer. You can get them on, online for pretty cheap. Uh, this is indispensable. I, I wouldn't have the knives I have without this particular piece of equipment. So I'll just turn it on. I usually set it at a low setting so it heats the oil slowly and more evenly because I want as much consistency as possible. So I'm not going to go over how to heat your knife up because there's plenty of videos online for that. But the gist of it is go to about non-magnetic go a little bit higher than that, about 25 degrees, it doesn't take much, and then go in for your quench. So going into the quench, you want your knife to be flat, you wanna plunge it in straight down like this. So go straight in, and then you wanna agitate immediately. So you just wanna do a gentle up and down, not side to side, don't swirl, just go up and down. As the swirling, what'll happen is the, the, the sides will get different uh, quench, you know, it'll quench at different rates and that'll cause these warpings. So just go straight down, up and down. All right, so I'm just about there. I'm going to fire the forge up and I'm going to do a quench. That's all there is to it. So you may have noticed that there aren't any bevels on this knife. I do my bevels after heat treatment. The reason is because it's really easy to overheat your cutting edge in the forge when you're heating the blade up. When you overheat the metal, you grow grain, which weakens the structure of the steel, making it more prone to cracking during the quench or breaking during use. So once that's cooled off, what I'll do is put it in the oven at 435 degrees and let it soak for about an hour. A lot of kitchen ovens are really inaccurate, so you're going to want to use that same thermometer that I showed you earlier and put the probe in just to monitor the temperature of the oven. 
If you do these steps the same way I'm doing, you're gonna hit 59 on the rock well every time, but it's always a good idea to get them checked. Uh, you can go to a local machine shop, they'll usually have rock well scale testers, uh, call beforehand, uh, it's really good to know consistency on your blades. Uh, you want to know what kind of product you're putting out. You want to know how good your product is. So hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.